the Acts of Apostles, we were told when the Holy Spirit came, the apostles who were gathered in office, who said were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then in chapter 4, verse 31, we are told again that when they prayed, the whole place were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now I want to ask, is this according to your own teaching? Being filled with the Holy Spirit or experiencing the Holy Spirit? Or is it that they were at first filled to a certain level with the Holy Spirit? And then at chapter 4, verse 31, they get filled to a greater level. I just want to understand. Thank you. So you're saying if someone is filled with the Holy Spirit, he can just pray and then the whole place is filled with the Holy Spirit. Is that is that the question? No. no. What, what's the question? Can you say it? There were, there were two passages in the scriptures. I said that they prayed, the apostles prayed, and they had the feeling of the Holy Spirit. And there was also a place they prayed, and there was fullness of the Holy Spirit. Then he wants to know, uh, what is here the, the first one? Is it that they, they, they were not filled enough. I don't understand. What was, what, was the, what was the nature of the feeling? What's the difference? Okay. Now each person experiences the Holy Spirit differently. It could be peace, love, joy, power, and and when people are have a constant relationship with God, he will get used to it. He will know when he's filled with the Holy Spirit. And there are people who have strong anointings that the presence of God is very powerful. Then they can pray and many people experience the Holy Spirit at the same time. It's true. So there are some people who are very open to the Holy Spirit that they can experience the Holy Spirit anytime. That's true. But then whether he's telling the truth or the lie, we don't know. We have, you have to tell at that instant whether the people experience the Holy Spirit or not experiencing the Holy Spirit. Did I get the question? He was trying to compare what happened on the day of Pentecost as to what happened in Acts chapter 4. He was trying to find out whether there are two different experiences of the day feeling of the Holy Spirit. On the day of the Pentecost, the apostles received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then again in Acts chapter 4, there was an experience in which they prayed in the house and the place where they were was. Okay. He wants to know the difference between the two experiences. Okay. Well, it's chapter 2, Acts chapter 2 was the initial coming down of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit chose to come that way. That with wind and with fire on the head of the people, it doesn't happen much. You know, some people said they experienced something like that. Uh, but it doesn't happen much like that. And then on, in chapter 4, they prayed the whole house shake and now this is one way. I'm just saying these are two different ways. But Acts chapter two has a significance because that was an initial infilling of the Holy Spirit coming down upon the people. That God chose a, a special way. And in chapter four, we don't see that much either with an earth, earthquake. But what we do is we just have a relationship with God, and then the relationship will go higher and higher. When people love God more and more and more and submit to God more. So we don't have to distinguish the two kinds. It's not very important. The manifestation is not very important. It's the inner relationship with God that is most important. Okay? Yes. Uh, actually, you got it right, but let me throw a small light to me. Hey, Father, let's say, we're all sitting here, our father is not around, he happens to come to the air. The first time, we get up and greet him, and he say, well, say welcome, welcome, and he will touch us. Then goes to the part of the place he lives, in the house, and stays there. And uh, a situation came up, we say, ah, daddy, we need your presence. He will come from the same house, he has not left us. Are you getting it? Please understand me. We are praying. The Holy Spirit is a person, P-E-R-S-O-N, a person, as Christ is a person, as the Father is a person, three persons in one God. Is that what that's true? Yes. So he came and was among them in the church. What's the church? The church is the collection of believers as you are here. This is the church. 
Yeah. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. That he dwell in the midst of the church. Then the church has a need for him to prove his death. That day they called on him. That was after Peter came back and reported how he was treated by the infidels who didn't want him to preach Christ anymore. Is that all right? Yes. So he said it to the apostles, to the disciples, and the rules are said, why does they hit the rage against the other son? And they cried to God, and God, God, Jehovah Shammah, God with us, moved. Are you with me? Yes. He moved. That his movement was a shaking that they felt. He was in their midst. He didn't come that moment. But we are differentiating the, uh, the issue of being baptized of the Holy Spirit and being filled of the Holy Spirit. There are different things. Baptizing is once. Filling is many times. Is that understood? Yeah. Now, you may not feel him now, but if you say, Lord, I want you to feel me, he will feel you. He will feel it. You feel that. Am I right? So, you are in other side. I didn't get everything you said. Okay, well, I mean, he was commenting, right? I he was uh, adding to what you said. Yeah. I mean, the we can have the, the Holy Spirit. And then, I, I think with the summary that as we grow in the knowledge of God, as we have continue in fellowship with Almighty God, God comes into us in fullness. Okay. Yeah. So, and some, some, some wants to know, uh, why is it that someone, after praying, he's been a Christian, he's been praying uh, over and over and over and over, asking for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and he doesn't receive the Holy Spirit. Why? Okay. Let me say this. If someone asks for the Holy Spirit, he would have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He asks for forgiveness and the presence of God, he would have the infilling, I mean the indwelling. But the infilling has to come from loving the Lord our God with all our mind, all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. That has to a whole person pray. It's not just the mind. So growing in the Lord is not just the mind, but the mind is part of it. It's the spirit, the relationship, and also the whole life. Okay? Okay, let's move on now. So please, I have a question. How are the number of years we are in Christ, and no one, someone has been a Christian for 20 years, has that to do with the infilling of the Holy Spirit? Uh, that has nothing to do with the length of time the person believed in Jesus. A person can believe in Jesus for a long time, but he doesn't submit to God much. He doesn't have a close relationship with God. His spirit is not open to God. He might not, you know, have not, you know, doesn't have the infill of the Holy Spirit. Actually, sometimes he might be very stubborn and resist the work of the Holy Spirit. So it, what I'm saying is, everyone who believes and follows Jesus, it's not just believing in the head, it's the whole life following Jesus, then he has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Anyone who's saved has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But to be filled with the Holy Spirit is another matter. And the initial feeling is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The initial, now for some people, the initial may be very powerful. So I rather use the term infilling of the Holy Spirit because the baptism of the Holy Spirit for some people is not very clear. It's not very clear when that happens. Okay. Yes. With regard to your question, some people are in the church for a long time and they desire the Holy Ghost, but they have not received. The reason is because they have not had adequate Holy Ghost evangelism. You see, Paul went to a church, Paul went to a particular church in Ephesus. And the people were there in church session. And Paul asked them, since you believed, have you received the Holy Spirit? They said, no, we have not even heard about it. So it depends on how people hear about the Holy Ghost. Because in the church today, we talk about seed, offering, um, sacrifice, and other things. But we neglect Holy Ghost evangelism. That is why many of our people are not filled. Thank you very much. Now, to me, those people there, it's not that they 
have haven't heard about the Holy Spirit. Rather, they don't have the relationship with Jesus. They just have the baptism of John the Baptist of repentance. They haven't had they haven't heard of the salvation of Jesus Christ. When people have the in, the knowledge of the salvation of Jesus Christ, he would have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Anyone, because in 1 Corinthians chapter two, uh, 12, verse 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, if not for the Holy Spirit, no one can confess that Jesus is the Lord. So if anyone really confess Jesus as the Lord, he has the Holy Spirit already. But those people there just knew the baptism of John the Baptist. Okay? Okay, now, let's move on. Um, I want to talk about how we can be filled with the Holy Spirit to maintain, to maintain. Um, but first, I'll explain the, I'm sorry, I'll first explain the work of the Holy Spirit in a person. Okay, I'm sorry. So put this down. Now is the work of the Holy Spirit. How people experience the Holy Spirit. In which ways. And please write these verses down because we're going to use it for a method of evangelism. I call it experience God evangelism. Experience God evangelism. To help people experience the Holy Spirit and then bring them to Christ. So these verses are important. So you can write this down. And you don't have to turn to the Bible. John 14, 27. John 14, 27. I'm going to give you a number of verses. So you have to keep writing it down. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. I peace I give you. Now it says here, it's Jesus who gives the peace. Some people might say, well, it's Jesus, not the Holy Spirit. But because Father, Son, and Holy Spirit work together. Therefore, when Jesus gives peace, the Holy Spirit also gives peace. So the Holy Spirit comes. One sign is people have peace. Of course, peace have different level. But generally, people feel more quiet. They feel more peaceful. The anger goes away. The frustration goes away. The whole person rests in peace. And then Matthew 11, 28. Matthew 11, 28. Now, these verses are important that you go home and remember these verses that you can use it for evangelism. Come to me who are weary and burdened and I'll give you rest. So, that's Jesus said, come to me. Now, here it shows the authority of Jesus. I cannot say to you, come to me, I'll give you rest. Nobody can say, come to me, I'll give you rest. We don't have the authority. But Jesus, he is God. He has his authority. When people come to Him, all those who are weary and burdened can have peace. So this is another, the burdens go away, is uh, the, the work of the Holy Spirit. Some people say they felt very heavy, they felt burdened, they worry about something. And then when they experience the Holy Spirit, they feel peaceful. Now some people say, without the being feeling of the Holy Spirit, I experience peace too. That's why what I'm saying is, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the infilling of the Holy Spirit are the same thing except of the degree. It's the same thing. All Christians experience peace and burdens go away. All Christians experience that. But do they experience it all the time? And how strongly do they experience it? That's the difference. So sometimes I talk to Christians who are not have not learned about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I said, when I pray for you, is the experience similar when you pray yourself? They said yes. So we're not experiencing a different Holy Spirit. It's just we can help people experience the Holy Spirit and we can help people experience the Holy Spirit powerfully. So that's the difference. That it's the same thing. Many Christians, they pray by themselves. They can experience the presence of God. The peace and the burdens go away. It's not just for infilling Christians. All Christians experience that, but the degree is different. Okay, number three, Romans 5.5. 5. Romans 5.5. 5. The love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So another thing is the Holy Spirit can give love to people. Give love to people. Romans 5.5. 5. 
I have prayed for big, strong men. And some of these men have never cried before. And then they suddenly started to cry. I have seen very strong men, very steady emotionally. And then they experienced the love of God and then they started to cry. So that's another work of the Holy Spirit, that people can experience the love of God. And I can remember when Carl Anacondia from Argentina, the evangelist, from Argentina, he came to Hong Kong, from South America. When he laid hand on me, I felt like power, like electricity entered me. He has a very strong anointing. And at the same time, I felt great love, so great, I cried for a long time. I can feel the power and the love very powerfully into my heart. And I said, I never realized we can experience God like that, that the relationship can be like that. So I spent a lot of time praying. I want to keep that presence. And another thought came to me, if you can serve God like this, I want to serve God like that too. And I have to say this, His anointing is much stronger than anointing on me, but it doesn't matter because each person has a different calling. I have a calling of teaching and training. Now I also pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit. But my main calling is teaching and training. That God has given me a mind and an understanding and a discernment how to teach and how to teach from the Bible. And so I cannot spend as much time praying. Now if I spend all day long praying, all the time, then I can have a strong anointing. But because I have to teach, so I have to write. I have to keep writing. So my calling is not the same as He, but it doesn't matter. We don't all have to have the same anointing. But I pray for people, 95% of people experience the Holy Spirit right away. And we can all have that too. But it's not as powerful. It's hardly are there people so anointed as Carlos and the Pondier. Or there is a person, I forgot the name. Uh, he, he waved his hand. There's a number of people like that. And, uh, Hundreds of people will fell in their power and experience the Holy Spirit. But we don't all have to have that same degree amount, the strength of the uh, anointing. We are all called to a different ministry. But the main thing is, do we love God and serve God? Everyone is called to love God and serve God. Okay? And then another way that people experience the Holy Spirit is in Roman, I, I'm sorry. Psalm 16 verses 8 to 9. Psalm 16 verses 8 to 9. There David said, I have sent the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices and my body also will rest secure. So David said he always set the Lord in front of him. So David had a very close relationship with him, with God. And then his heart is glad. His heart is filled with joy. His tongue rejoices. It's Psalm 16, verses 8 to 9. Psalm 16, verses 8 to 9. Okay? And also his body will rest secure. The body will feel secure and comfort. Now that is another sign of the Holy Spirit. People feel comfort to the body. The body feels comfort. That has happened to many people we pray for. And some people have sickness and then they feel comfort and the, the discomfort went away or decreased, is decreased. And some people experience total healing. Some people experience partial healing. So that's another experience is the body feel comfort. And when I pray, I feel the whole body in great comfort and it's like a power is squeezing my legs and my body is feel very light now all of this is the work of the holy spirit now some people might say they say i thought the holy spirit only worked on the spirit not on the body but my answer is like this the bible has said that he would heal people that you know that by his stripes were healed so he can bless a body, he created a body, he can heal a body. Lay, you know, when you lay hand on the sick, they'll be healed. So God can work on the body. If that's true, why, why can't God also work in us 
in our body when we pray to Him, that we can feel Him physically. And also in um, Revelation 1.17, when John saw Jesus, he fell to the ground. So this is another way that people experience God. He fell to the ground. And also uh, in Acts chapter 9, when Saul saw Jesus, he also fell to the ground. And then when the soldiers tried to arrest Jesus, and Jesus said, I am. And then they all fell to the ground. So that's another way people can experience the Holy Spirit's power in the body, that people can fall down. Now when that power is not so strong, people may sway. That's my support for people swaying when they pray. They feel the power of God swaying them. It's not the, the body moving, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. And if I relax my body and pray to God, I can feel the power pushing me. So that's another way that we can experience it. You can feel the power of God swaying you. And then if you relax, you might find your body also recover physically. When you pray like this every day, you pray like this every day, the body sway you. There are people who have different sickness and they find the sickness go away. Okay, and then Psalm 4.8. Psalm 4.8. There it says that I will lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. So here is talk about the Holy Spirit can give us better sleep and make our body also dwell in safety. It's Psalm 4.8. 4.8. 4, verse 8. Okay, and then Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah verse chapter 61 verses 1 to 3 you probably are very familiar with these verses that it says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor so the Holy Spirit anointed us and then we have the spirit of the Lord upon me so this is a different kind of anointing from the Old Testament that we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit to preach the good news but it doesn't stop there they also sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to heal the people who are sad, who are depressed. So that's very useful for evangelism and for inner healing, to bring healing, to heal the brokenhearted, to also to um, proclaim freedom for the captives. When people are under bondage of any kind, they can be free. And also to comfort all who mourn, to bring the comfort of the Lord. And then also a crown of beauty instead of ashes and oil of gladness instead of warning to have the joy of the Lord. I have prayed for many people they experience the joy of the Lord. One time, now some people even experience the joy of the Lord the first time I prayed for them. When they experience the Holy Spirit, instantly they have the joy of the Lord. When people are more relaxed and believe in the love of God, they can experience the joy quickly. But I have to say this, I hope you don't mind. I came to Africa, I find that it's not easy for people in Africa to experience the joy of the Lord. Now they dance a lot, they dance physically, but as for the inner spirit to love God and the freedom to say it doesn't matter to laugh, it seems that it's difficult. But in another country I went to, many people experience the joy of the Lord. But in Africa, it seems harder. So I hope you will be very open in these few days, and then some of you will experience the joy of the Lord. And the day when I experienced the joy of the Lord, it was a few months after my, my exp initial experience of the Holy Spirit. And when I experienced the joy, it just keeps flowing out. And I said, I want to keep this. And what happened was, all through the meeting, because before that, I already have been praying much every day. So I learned to worship God in my spirit. So all through the meeting, I kept loving God from my heart and the joy keep coming. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And then when I went home in the bus, I want to keep that. And I cannot laugh loudly in the bus. So this is what I did. Laughing without the sound is possible. Laughing without the sound. And then when I went home, I let the joy keep coming. And the next morning, and after that, every time I pray, the joy stays. 
And I want to say this, if some of you experience the draw of the Lord, please spend more time to build up the relationship with God, to love God, and handle different problems in your life so that you can have the joy. If you worry about things, you cannot keep the joy. If you have a lot of worry, if you, you know, have burdens, you cannot have the joy. We need to relax because God takes care of everything. We don't have to be responsible for everything. We just do our parts. Can you say this with me? I just do my parts. I just do my parts. And trust in God. I trust in God. He will finish the job. He will finish the job. He's responsible for the result. He is responsible. I don't have to carry the burden of the results. And then I can be more relaxed. And when people hurt me, God will protect me. They cannot steal from me. God will give back, give it back to me. So I can relax, then I can have joy. But for some people, when they are yelled at by other people, they keep being angry. They keep the sadness. And then they, they will lose everything. They will lose everything because they won't have joy and they have, have no strength and they don't have a good relationship. The whole life suffer. But if we let go of the burdens, don't eat garbage. Remember this, don't eat garbage. Eat the good things from God and from people. When they say good things to us, we appreciate that. Eat the good things, don't eat garbage from people. If they are uh, you know, yelling at us, we don't have to take it seriously. They say you're dumb. You won't become dumb suddenly. You say you're no use. We won't become no use. God gives us a plan in our life. So can you believe that? We don't have to take the burden. Then we can have the joy and the inner healing. Now inner healing takes management of the heart. And I will talk more about that when I talk about emotions and handling thinking because this is very important. I will have another session to handle that. That's something we all need to learn. Because everyone must have some kind of burdens. So how can we handle that? We'll talk about that later. So this is one way you can experience the Holy Spirit. Now some people, they come to us and say, please pray for me so that I will be delivered from my depression. I say, yes, I can pray for you. And you will feel better, but you need to continue to have the relationship with God and continue to handle the problems in your life. You have to say no to all the garbage. You have to let go of the garbage and then continue to take the good things from God and then you can keep the strong, the peace of God and the healing of God. And some people even ask me, please pray for me so I can preach better. Pray for me so I can play the piano. I say, it doesn't work like that. In the kingdom of God, you still have to learn and work hard. You have to handle your life. It's not just a pray. Some people pray, think they pray, and then they will receive all the spiritual gifts. It's our relationship with God. And God will give to each one according to His plan. Some people, you know, for me, my anointing, my strength is in teaching and training, and also helping people to experience the Holy Spirit. I hear from God about teachings. Even last night when I prayed, God gave me some teaching. But for me, when I pray for people, I'm not as some other people. They pray for people, they know immediately what is happening to the person's life. And some people saw Jesus. I never saw Jesus in my vision. But it doesn't matter. Because God will give us the best. What is best for us? We don't have to have everything other people have. When we love God, God will give us according to His plan. Can you trust God in that? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people always want the gift of prophecy. And whenever there is a prophet come, they come there for prayer. And they, any prophet, they come, they come for prayer. And I want to say this, God does give prophets. I have experienced prophecy myself, very accurately. Some people saw me immediately, they can name my problem I was facing. And some people saw me and said, one day you go over the world. Actually, two persons, to, uh, two or three persons told me that. They received revelation like that. And there were people who just saw me and then received message. But I have seen many lousy prophets. 
the so-called prophets. I have heard prophets that prophesy totally wrongly. I've seen that happen. And I've seen prophets, basically they are teaching. They will say, trust in God, God will bless you. The Bible teach people that. And many people go to prophecy and just say, okay, repent, trust in Jesus, God will bless you. This year, He will bless you. Now, that's true. That's what the Bible says. Prophets are mainly for direction of our life, for ministry, and for direction of the church. Now, many people go there and they hope the prophet will say to him, you're a good Christian. God loves you. God likes you. God is going to give you more money. This year, you're going to get a wife. This is not the main function of a prophet. <laughs> the Bible tells you, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. You don't need a prophet to tell you that. And some prophets even say this. You know, one person in a church that they always send out prophetic emails. So the person said, do you want a prophetic email from the church? I said, no. Because God has guided me. God has spoken to me. And I know that church, there's some things they twist. But that person sent an email anyway. And I opened the email. It says, this year you all will experience prosperity uh, and wealth. I said, that is not from the Bible. The Bible is say, says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and this righteousness and all these things will be added to you. It's not for everyone. It's for people who seek the kingdom of God and love God and obey God and serve God. We cannot see people say, this year you'll have a lot of money. This year you'll find a husband. Now some people said, a prophet said, anyone who has faith will find a husband. And she has been looking for a husband and she hasn't found one yet. So she lost faith in God. I said, that's not in the Bible. We cannot say to someone, you have faith, you'll for sure find a husband. Because we don't know what God gives to each person. But God will give the best. For some people, they have marriage. For some people, they have a good single life. Let me tell you, some people who are married are not necessarily following God. Some people suffer a lot in a marriage. Don't think that marriage is the solution of our problem. You, when you have the person prepared by God, that is the right thing. And we also treasure the relationship and love the person and build a relationship. That is a gift from God. But if some people think if I get married, all my problems will go away. I would advise you, for young people like that, to go to talk to as many couples as possible and ask them, do you enjoy your marriage? <laughs> they will tell you, many marriages have problems. But when I have time, I will, if you come punctually, I have time to cover the marriage part. And then it's very important. So I hope you all come punctually. Let me tell you, I've been waiting in the hotel early. And then when they see the people come, and then they pick me up. I've been waiting. Yesterday I've been waiting for a long time. So come early, and then I can go as much as I can. Okay. So here I talk about the work of the Holy Spirit. Another work of the Holy Spirit. In Mark 16, verses 17 to 18. Now this verses actually started with Mark chapter 16 verse 15 and then Jesus said go into the whole world to preach the gospel to all creation and then he who believes that is baptized shall be saved and then it says miracles will follow those who believe in my name they'll cast out demons and then in verse 18 they'll lay on the sick and they'll be healed let me ask you, how many people can have miracles? How many people can have miracles? Who can have miracles? Who can have miracles? Everyone who believes. Okay, let me ask you, how many people here believe that there are miracles? Okay, good. Put down your hands, please. How many people pray for someone and there are miracles? You pray for someone. You pray for someone and there are miracles. Well, that's good. So many of you. That's wonderful. That means you are praying for people. So it's very important. Not just, we don't just believe there are miracles, but we actually exercise that gift 
exercise that authority, then we pray for people and then we can see miracles. When we see miracles, it will strengthen our faith and it can build up the church. But when we experience miracles, we don't stop there. We tell people this is from God. God has blessed you. You want to follow God. If you don't follow God, the miracles can go away. And if you want miracles to happen in your whole lifetime, you want to follow God. So this is another work of the Holy Spirit to cast out demons and to bring healing. Now for me to cast out demons, as I said yesterday, it's not just casting out the demons all the time. And in Jesus' name, cast out the demons. Some people will shout for hours. In Jesus' name, demons come out. Demons come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. In Jesus' name, come out. They would shout for hours. They would shout to everyone. And first, it's bad for the throat. <laughs> Second, the person just believed in the power of this person who cast out demon for them. Because this person shut and then the demons go away. But if we build up the relationship of this person with God, God is loving you. God is almighty. God has all power over all authorities. God is going to you know, give us authority to travel on snakes and scorpions. So you believe in God and you submit to God and repent of all your sins and let God take care of your emotions and negative thinking and God can heal you and drive out the demons. So believe with me. And then in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, the demons come out. Oh. And some people, the demons will leave right away. And sometimes I even have joy of the Lord. We just say, hallelujah, ha, 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 ha. And the demons keep coming out. And one person asked me, are you casting out demons? I said, well, the demons are coming out. I guess I am. But why aren't you saying in Jesus' name that demons come out? I said, Jesus' presence will drive out the demons. I mean, we can drive out the demons with words, but presence, the presence of God can do that too. So, and also when you keep shouting, the person just think about one thing. Has to come out, has to come out, has to come out. But the, the mind is not on God, and it's not on God is taking care of things. That is hard for him to experience uh, the demons going out. It's best for him to have, that we can do different things to help him to build up the relationship with God. So that's another way we can experience the Holy Spirit. Okay, and then evangelism. In the Bible, in Romans chapter 15, verse 18 to 19. Please write this down. Romans 15, 18 to 19. There it says that, I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God. By what I've said and done, by the power of signs and miracles, through the power of the Spirit. So it says here, in Romans 15, 18 to 19, Evangelism is not just by word. It's also by the power of the Holy Spirit. Also by miracles. So it's biblical. But some people say, well, that was in the uh, apostles' time. In the early church only. After the early church, no more miracles. The answer is, in Mark chapter 16, beginning of 15, Verse 15 to 20, Mark 16, verse 15 to 20, which I quoted earlier. There it says that go into all the world to preach to, to all the creation, and then miracles will follow those who believe. So what it says is that miracles will follow all the time of a preach to the whole world. Then Jesus never said it will stop. And then another answer is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There it talks about the spiritual gifts, including gift of healing and prophets. And Paul never said that the gifts will stop. The Bible never said that the gifts will stop. So, so it's not biblical to say that the gifts, the spiritual gift, will stop. And people based on now, how do they have this? Uh, what do you call this? Uh, this uh, the teaching that. The spiritual gift stopped after the early church. They based on 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 at the end there. There it says that one day there will be no more speaking of tongue. No more of this uh, um, knowledge. 
But what it says there is we'll see Christ face to face in heaven. Then we don't need to speak in tongues. In heaven, no more, you don't need any more miracles as it is on today or the knowledge we have here, we'll have full knowledge at that time. So chapter 13 of First Corinthians actually talk about the new heaven and new earth, not talking about now. But many people use that and say, now there's no more miracles. Another verse is First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 2 to 5. You can write this down. First Corinthians chapter 2, 2 to 5. This is also about that uh, Paul said that he was, his preaching was not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So it's not just human wisdom, but also the Holy Spirit and the power. So here it talk about not just by word, but also by the Holy Spirit. So our ministry is also not only by word, but also by ministry. Now, later I will talk about how to use this for evangelism. But right now I'm going to pray for two persons who are willing to come out here and just demonstrate how to pray for people. Any two persons who hunger for God, come out here. I'll pray for you and come. Anyone can come. Anyone hunger for God. Two. Okay, one female. You can stand. Someone hold the mic for me, please. Someone hold. Now just relax. Relax. Think of God. Just relax and think of God. And just love God from the Spirit. Now someone can stand behind them in case they fall down. Now, they, they might not fall down, but if someone falls down, it's better someone to stand behind them. And you just love God. Everyone too, please stand up. Everyone. You might experience the Holy Spirit in your seat. You love God. Oh, Jesus, I love you. I worship you. I need you. Oh, hallelujah. And I want to say this. In order to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we can talk to the Father, the whole, uh, Jesus Christ, or the Holy Spirit. We don't have to ask the Holy Spirit to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It, because Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is three in one. Just relax. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone close your eyes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. I worship you. I could sing of your love forever. 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 I could sing of your love. the mountain. 
Okay, now, each person could experience the Holy Spirit differently. Then you would experience peace, right? Did you experience peace? And you too, sir, you experience peace, right? Okay, now, and comfort. Do you feel comfort in your body? It's like the person, the whole person is in comfort. And maybe some people experience lightness. It's like floating, floating, right? Now, these are some common experience of people. And so I'm saying, if we hunger for God, He will come. He will come. The most important thing for us to do, the most important thing for us to do is to build up the relationship with God. It's not just shouting, or it's just not just asking the Holy Spirit to fill us all the time. It's building up the love for God, to believe God is loving us. And you notice also when I lay on people, I don't push. There's no point to push, push. But there are many people who push people to fall down, to show people how powerful they are. But is that, does that glorify God? Does that glorify God? People know. People know you push them. It's, and also God knows. So it's not going to glorify God. It's not going to build up the faith of people. So I hope we all will not push. It doesn't matter whether they're standing or falling down. It doesn't matter. The main thing is they love God, they can experience the presence of God, the work of the Holy Spirit, and the anointing is upon you. When you keep praying, you can experience more and more, and you can have a stronger anointing every day. And then you use it, it will glorify God, and we will talk more after that, after the lunch break. Any question now, any question about what you experience? Maybe some people don't understand something. The relationship with God? Yeah, okay, it, it, started, me, yeah. it started yesterday. Were you here yesterday? Yes. Okay. Yesterday I talked about the prayer of grace. Remember? The prayer of worship and the interactive prayer. And also I talk about worship God with the whole spirit, the soul and spirit, the mind, the will, and the feelings, and then the whole spirit. So you keep doing that and handle the problems in your life, which I will talk more about. So basically, it's believing in the Bible, whatever the Bible says, God loves us, believe that totally. Whenever we pray, we experience the peace, it's an expression of God's love. It's God loving us. And when we experience God speaking to us to repent, that is God loving us. How God drew us to Him, that's God loving us. So all the time we say, thank you God, you're loving me. Thank you God, you're blessing me. That way, we have the faith. And then every day spend longer time loving God. And then we can feel the Holy Spirit more. And I'm gonna, I will explain, there are a, a few points about how to build up the relationship with God later. Okay? And in the book of Judges, chapter 14, verse 5 and verse 6, where Samson was going to Timnat to take a wife. When he saw, the Bible said that when he saw the... Is this related to what we talked about? Yes, sir. The Bible said there in verse 6 that when he saw the young lion roaring against him, then the Holy Spirit came upon him mightily. And he tore the lion just as if he could have torn a kid. And he had nothing in his hand. So that Holy Spirit, I believe it is only given to those people who have to do something with it, and not everybody. I don't believe it will be given to anybody. So, my belief, I want you to remind me, it's my belief. Is it for the people who are going to work with the Holy Spirit, or for everybody, every Christian? Okay. Now, for David to fight the lions, that's for him. Not everyone has to fight a lion, and you cannot find a lion here. And, uh, but for everyone, Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3, to heal the brokenhearted, to comfort all who mourn, to bring joy to people, and also lay on the sick will be healed, and cast out demons. This is for everyone. Because in Mark 16, it says that miracles will follow those who believe. And then many people found that when they pray for people in the power of the Holy Spirit, that people would get delivered. The burdens go away, the sadness go away. So we find this very common, happen to many, many Christians 
when they exercise in a part of the Holy Spirit. So those are the common things. But to fight the lions, we probably don't have to do that. So let me just add to them. God wants to have relationship with every man on earth. Yeah. One of the ways he does that is by giving his spirit, you know, the, uh, the, the making his spirit to come into us. Uh, I believe that every man is evidence of God's love. God wants to love everybody that is interested in everybody's life. And that's why he has given his Holy Spirit so that everyone will receive. But then it all depends on how we are ready to receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's not receiving, not just receiving, it's hungering for God. The relationship, we hunger for God, we spend time building up a relationship with God. So and God is willing, very happy, He wants all people to be filled with the Holy Spirit.